to run. This is Will Sanchez. My very special guest tonight is Steve Lasto. He is the founder and CEO of New York City Runs. We're going to learn all about New York City Runs and Steve Lasto. I will. Steve, thanks for making this happen to the last minute. I appreciate it. My pleasure, man. Let's start, Steve, by introducing yourself to our audience, a little bit about yourself. Where were you born, raised, and a little bit about your schooling? Okay. I was born just uptown from where we are now um, at what was then Manhattan Hospital. Um, so I am a local boy. Um, grew up on Long Island, went to college in Florida, came back to New York nearly immediately after that was over with, and um, I've been here ever since. Mostly live in Brooklyn. Um, it's a dirty little secret that I actually live in Manhattan right now, but that's going to change soon. And um, that's about me. Well, you as a child, were you athletically involved? Poorly. I was on high school track and cross country. I was definitely one of the slowest people on the team. And friends of mine sort of pushed me into it, and um, you know, I, I had fun with it, but I was never a um, never anything anything special. In Florida, were you? What was your major? Did you said you went to college there? Yeah, my degree was in. Um, it's been a while in journalism, with like a concentration in advertising and PR. Uh, the internet happened. The Last year I was in college, um, or the next to last year, close some, somewhere to the, near the end, Netscape got released, and I thought that was kind of interesting. And so, you know, I went into new media pretty quickly after college with a brief stop at advertising agencies. Okay, you said after college you went back to New York. Yeah. So you worked for advertising at that time? In New York, my first job was with uh, Ziff Davis, um, who published, uh, I don't know if they still publish, but they published then PC Magazine and all sorts of computer magazines. And the internet sort of took down most of those magazines, including PC Mag, which is quite venerable. Well, PC Magazine, I think, is still around. Just as a website, unfortunately. Really? Yeah. Oh, I used to read that. Most of my computer education came from PC Magazine. Um, I was I was very happy to work there. Interesting. But at some point, uh, you got involved in running because you know, run this organization called New York City Runs. But before we get to that, how did you get involved in running again? Very briefly at Ziff Davis, I ran the corporate challenge um, um, on the behest of uh, Tim Decker. Tim Decker is in the Flyers. We used to work at Ziff Davis together and have become friends again since I started New York City Runs. Um, so I did a little bit of that. And then I pretty much, I, I partied for a few years and I wasn't really focusing on running. And sometime around 2002 or three, I started running again on my own and um, stuck with it after that. What was the impetus for New York City Runs? We had this uh, recession start a few years ago. Um, recession, yeah. Recession. It was a big deal. Made and a lot of papers. Made a lot. Made a lot of papers, which which subsequently went out of business. So the during the recession, my consulting business was sort of withering away, but I wasn't paying attention because I had one client that was pretty much paying the bills. And then um, things went south there, and um, I had to find some new uh, new income. And I was basically an IT consultant at that point, and didn't really want to go further into it and the idea for New York City runs the website just the website as, a, as an informational resource it's sort of been something I'd worked on with a friend a year or two before that we never got anywhere it was called um, runnersloop.com which I believe I still own as a domain um, but we didn't get it off the ground the, the, what we could do wasn't really what I wanted to do and I had other things going on but then like I said the recession happened and so I said um, if I can get this, this website off the ground I'll focus on it for a while while sort of getting by on the dregs of my IT consulting business Anyway, one thing led to another. <laughs> Interesting. IT consulting, shoot, you were troubleshooting. What kind of consulting was that? Troubleshooting, some web development, um, mostly small businesses and um, consumers, things like that. Um, and I still work with some of the small businesses because they're relationships that go back like over a decade now. Okay, so were you so, developing websites for them or business? A little, or a little bit here and there. Put together a really, really successful comic book selling site once upon a time. Um, I, mean, I probably put, to, over the years, I put together like 20 or 30 websites, but I never really thought of myself as like a big time web developer. Just a, oh, cool. well, it was, was a little bit night. of this, a little bit of that. It's the reason I know some of these terms because I used to be in IT, but ah. before the internet. <laughs> ah, before the internet. <laughs> different I know, before a different era. BI. <laughs> when, when IT had control. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm fascinated by, uh, by all the stuff that uh, they did do now with the open source software. Were you into that open source when you were? NYC, actually this is interesting, NYC Runs was built with Joomla, which is one of the dominant um, open source content management, management systems. And I did build that from, from basically off the shelf parts. And one of the reasons it didn't go through the first time was because the code the software that we had available just, just wasn't good enough. And when I decided to do it again, I happened to look at a product called Jom Social mm -hmm. and said, oh, this is perfect. And that's why I said, okay, if I can get this off the ground in 40 days, I'll give it a shot. Okay. And it's really interesting this, this past six months or so, as you saw, we launched the website a few weeks ago. That's in WordPress, which is, of course, another open source CMS, a little younger than Joomla. And we hired a development firm for that. 
And this was the first time I've ever been a client uh-huh. instead of being the developer. I had it switched around on me. And I think it's safe to say that I had every um, everything that I ever did to a client push, you know, reversed on me this time around. <laughs> it was a, it it was a learning process. It always takes longer than, than you think it does. Oh, it took a while. <laughs> it always does. It's, yeah. just, it's just phenomenal, even though that was the bane in my day. You know, why can't we get this thing faster? Yep. And even with uh, reusable software and, and all these tools, it still takes a long time. Well, a lot of the code's reusable. Obviously, the CMS is, you know, at the core WordPress. But, you know, getting the race manager to do just what we wanted to do, that's a, a high degree of customization. If I recall, reading uh, some of your blogs, your initial idea was to be a place where people can find local races. There were three goals for the initial website. One of them was the race calendar, which was clearly necessary. You know, there were plenty of races that weren't going being heard of, you know, that were just sort of floundering along. And that was ne- that was what I really wanted personally. Um, a place where runners could find clubs was a second part, but you know, that was a little not as not as big in scope. And the third part was a partner finder. Okay, what's that? Partner well, say you finder. wanted uh, somebody to run with at 10 o'clock oh, on okay. Tuesday morning, you know, or whatever, you know, at a certain pace. And the partner finder, I, I'd love for somebody to call me and tell me if they ever found a partner on NYC Runs. It was one of these <laughs> things I put a lot of work into, and I'm not sure it was ever actually used, um, except for maybe the occasional stalking. NYR has a web page. I don't know if they still have it, actually, where you could, the, in the old version of the website, where you actually could list you know, your name and your email, that's what you were looking for. But it was very flat, and this was like searchable. It could search like the entire NYC Runs member database. It was actually a pretty good idea, but what, but what happened at the same time was social media took off. Mm-hmm. And so I don't think that, you know, a partner finder and a, the club tools, at least those clubs that we envisioned back then, were nearly as necessary. Because now running is so, you know, so ridiculously social. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it takes... Running is one of the things that when, you know, Facebook is sort of illustrating, you know, what's going on in social, what's going on in their ecosystem, that um, they point to and go, look what they're doing in running. Look at things like Livestrong. Um, look at things like New York Roadrunners boards. Look at things like, you know, whatever, like NYC Runs. So I think some of that made the website as a hub of social activity, the old forums and bulletin boards, for instance, yeah, yeah. which you, you'll see aren't on the current NYC Runs. Yeah, yeah. You know, sort of irrelevant, unfortunately. Which well, is a shame because I like that stuff. We got into doing race registration about a year later, and with Brooklyn Roadrunners Club and being our first client, and uh, it's Michael Balbos and Steve Rennell's club, and um, now those guys work with us on our races, so it's sort of funny how it comes around. But so they were our first client, and they, they, very quickly it became apparently we needed to go into timing as well because a lot of these little races didn't have timing, and that their Valentine's Day race grew really quickly, and it was like it was crazy. You know, it was a cl- it was just crazy that that went one year, mm-hmm. and so we said, okay, let's get into timing. And so it took me a little while to figure out how much I wanted to spend and what we wanted to get. But at the same time, once you start doing timing, once you're doing registration and you're talking this all the time, it's like, well, we can put on our own races. And so... Um, New York City runs races. Yes. Right. And so we had the lousy t-shirt race. That was your first one? Yes. Was, is that the, what you wear? No, it's not. I, I was going <laughs> no, to wear, wear one of those today, and then I realized <laughs> I didn't do it. I wore... This I guess the, you were checking to see if you were. The Gibson, it says. This is for the for the Gibson robots. The Gibson is um, also a, is a bar in Brooklyn. They're a sponsor of the uh, Brooklyn Marathon. But more importantly than that, the um, Gibson robots are playing in the playoffs for their second consecutive championship tomorrow. And... Um, I'm a, I'm a former robot and still a fan. I'm representing <laughs> for my softball team. Oh, it's a softball team. <laughs> it's a softball team, sorry. Okay, um, cool, very cool. <laughs> All right, so the lousy T-shirt was your first, was that a, like a 5K? That was the 5K in Riverside Park. That was Riverside the first of those weeknight Riverside Park races. Well, now you expanded that because uh, you work with uh, organizations like Back on My Feet to make sure their people can do the Wednesday night runs. We have a need for volunteers at our races, which we fulfill full through the volunteer program that we do where runners get a free race if they volunteer. And this was sort of a twist on it where some of the sponsors volunteered so that these guys could run the race, but it works out perfectly. Okay. Um, you know, and they're, they've made, they, it's been really interesting having that group out at those races and at the Al Goldstein races in Prospect Park. Right, right. Um, it's Mishka with Back on My Feet, though, Yes, right? she's yeah. the director of the New York City contingent. Yep. Okay. Now, you mentioned Riverside Park. How does it work in setting up a race at a place like Riverside Park? Do you need uh, permission from a guru, a park commissioner? You need to go through the New York City park permitting process, basically. You need insurance. Volunteers are helpful. <laughs> it's not very hard. For small races, it's not like cumbersome. It's when you're doing races for several thousand people, or I think 500 is really the magic number. Um, you know, that's when the fees can get a little more onerous. 
Um, okay, so 500 or under your sort of cool list of parks in terms of uh, the fees and uh, well, the management. It, it's still a process. With the Brooklyn Marathon, we had a really interesting um, relationship with Prospect Park, where we very quickly went from doing these races in Riverside Park, which were low key, to doing something that was you know, a little bit over the top and a little bit exciting. Now we're talking about the inaugural Brooklyn Marathon that started last year. Yep. It's, I mean, very exciting for Brooklyn. So tell us about that process. That was, in, in essence, our second race, you know, the second NYC runs race. We had a bunch of the Riverside Park races, but it was the second kind of race we did, and it was a big step up. And, you know, we got some pushback from parks, but that pushback actually was really, really helpful. And while at the, at the time it was really, really annoying, over time it has developed into a really, really good relationship. You know, to the point that, you know, less than a year after after fighting those fights, we're now working hand-in-hand -hand with the Prospect Park Alliance to put on a fundraiser on um, November 3rd, I think that is. Yeah, the marathon's on Sunday the 4th. Yeah, so no Saturday, November 3rd, there'll be a race in Prospect Park that we're producing along with the Prospect Park Track Club to benefit the Prospect Park Alliance. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. So did they push back? You, you, they had objections. Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, in, in sales, they say objection is a good sign. Yeah. When they raised those. Now, did borough president Marty Markowitz get involved? The borough president's office has been um, has been involved with the race. In fact, they um, one of the medals and one of the the um, techies from the, from the from the race are in the Brooklyn Borough President's um, Museum in City Hall, in Borough Hall rather. Um, but um, they weren't too involved at that point. Um, they have been supportive since, and I think that as we try to move that race onto the streets. You know, I th they're going to play a huge, a huge part. Um, I think that's still a year or two away from happening, at least. But I'm community-minded. I'm part of a community board, and I know the importance of getting your local officials involved. You might not think they're aware or interested, but they are. Particularly, oh, yeah. if something comes up, it's always good to pick up the phone and talk to somebody that can help. Brad Lander's office was hugely, hugely um, helpful. Very um, prominent Brooklyn councilman. Very, you, very active. You definitely need those people involved because yeah. they can uh, open doors and help push things through. Riverside Park was a little easier. It was a little lower key, um, different different people involved. And we're doing a 5K and not a marathon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, in, in any instance, Roosevelt Island, Riverside Park, um, Shore Road Park, it's, it's a cooperative process. And without naming any names right now, that's why it, it sort of bugged me last year when another running group went after the Parks Department very publicly. I thought that was very counterproductive to what they were doing. It was possibly counterproductive to what I was doing to other people. Have yeah. you done runs at Van Cortland Park? We had a permit for a run one last year. I never got around to doing it. It was the week before the Brooklyn Marathon. And oh, you were busy. Yeah, we had a lot going on. Um, I'd like to do some cross-country stuff next year, though. Okay, yeah. Van Cortland Park. Van Cortland Park um, and also um, Alley Pond. Alley Pond. I'm not Queens. familiar with that. In Queens, and it's in it's 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 sort of way out there in Queens. In Queens, okay. Yeah. But let's talk about Roosevelt Island because uh, that's in my district. Okay. And I love Roosevelt Island, cool. particularly with the tram. You can get there and the subway. And I've volunteered a couple of times. Have you run one of the races? No, I haven't run the races, but I've volunteered okay. uh, two yeah. of the races, the five Ks and the ten Ks. Have you had? And the view is spectacular in certain places. You can take pictures as the runners go. What was the relationship like? Who did you work with? It was interesting. Roosevelt Island, a client asked us to do a race there for them first. One of our first clients, the Iclita Silver Foundation, um, where we did a 5K for them last, I think it was last October, and then we did another one. Is that one. a charitable organization? The yeah, okay. yeah. I Iram DeFilver is the guy in charge. His sister, Ikla, um, died of a bone marrow disease, and the foundation thing he started, um, in which he's trying to um, to grow in a number of different ways. One of them is doing these races, which actually have been highly successful. Um, you know, um, there's, and we think we're going to take them to a regional level in the spring. Okay, so they hired you to, to manage the race, to, yeah. the registration, and setting up the course. The whole nine yards. The whole, well, you know, this yeah. is... This and this, is, was from, this was from scratch. There was, like, nothing going on with Roosevelt Island back then. Right, I mean, you, yeah. you gone from, <laughs> you know, the simple bulletin board, uh, find a partner, now you're doing the whole nine yards, as you say. You know, it helped that we had guys like Michael Ring, who done some races with Prospect Park Track Club, and that I could rely on while we sort of got our... You know, okay. wheels he, under he's us. the guy on the bike that leads the... Mike uh, is the guy on the bike. <laughs> that, that leads the runners off. Exactly. And he's been around a long time. I always see him uh, when the Prospect Park does the last 10 miles of uh, the marathon. 
you know, he's always a, one of the leaders for that. And that will be October 28th this year. Oh, there you yeah. go. You see Mike there as well. I believe uh, you'll see one of our vans out there. <laughs> oh, cool, because they have free uh, bag checks in those, uh, in those vans. Let's not tell uh, everybody. Well, speaking of, <laughs> speaking of ba- uh, bag checks. Do you want to talk about bag checks? There was uh, a little controversy <laughs> in, uh, in road runners. What was your take on that whole situation? You know, we don't put on any races for 50,000 people at NYC Runs yet. Um, maybe one day. Um, probably not. Um, <laughs> that's really not what we're looking to do. But race management, those kind of operations take massive logistical efforts. I can't imagine what goes into putting on New York City Marathon. I and mean, I have I have a little bit of an idea because I've worked with them on different things. But you know, it's huge. I don't think they would have eliminated the bag check if they didn't if they didn't have a good reason. Mm-hmm. Um, what what happened that led to that point? I can't say. But I mean. You know, when people were attacking New York Roadrunners on Facebook and the media, when they were, you know, when they say when, when they when they say, oh, they're just trying to steal your money or take more, make more money, or yeah, yeah. you know, they reference Mary's salary or whatever. To me, that just that those arguments are just very fallacious. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's, it's very silly. I mean, nobody at New York Roadrunners is interested in making a race worse. I've never met a race director who wanted to upset. The runners, mm-hmm. you know, we're all we're all terrified of the runners. <laughs> you know, even though we're the next day, we're the runners. Right, you know? right. Um, you know, um, so you know the the foaming at the mouth that went on, I thought was a little little much. Mm-hmm. That said, like like with many things, it probably could have been better executed. Okay, so in, it was one of those communications things. Communi- ex- that's an excellent term. Excellent. It was a communications thing. Well, you know, it reminded me when when they did this, you know, a little bit like Apple. Well, Apple sets the their own rules. If they say they're going to do a, a phone, you know, there's no focus groups. Mm-hmm. They just put it out there, and, and everybody follows them. And it seems like Roadrunners thought they were like the Apple store, and they and they got a little bit of a surprise when they're not. I don't know if I go with that entirely. I, I see your point. You know, Steve Jobs was a wholly different creature. You know, and corporate boards or nonprofit boards are creatures in their own rights. Mm-hmm. So I doubt it's quite like that. But you know, I mean, culture culture informs decisions. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's been a learning experience. They, as as you know, they brought it back. It seems to be for a one year extension. They're calling it. So it's not clear what next year is going to look like. But I guess it all depends on how this year goes. If it's uh, if it proves to be very popular, successful, the poncho really takes off. Sure. Of course, they were making fun of the, uh, the everything about it, even including the poor poncho. It would probably be a collector's item. I kind of wanted the poncho. I thought about running for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly different topic. As you know, this year was the first time there was an Iron Man in New York City. And I don't know if you, you know that particular director. John Koff. You do know him? I, I know of him. Okay. okay. Yeah. And he says it took him over eight years to plan for this. And uh, I was a volunteer, and I was just fascinated by it. But as you know, it's been canceled for the mm-hmm. next year. So what is your take on that? Yeah. I was in Mexico when it was going on. I sort of knew from, like, listening to guys that I knew that were doing the race, like Mark Krauth, to tell me what was going on, you know, from their Facebook post what was going on. But I wasn't following all too closely. But, I mean... Logistically, that's a that's a complicated event. There's a lot going on, and I was surprised they decided to cancel as quickly as they did. I mean, it wasn't the noise permit in Riverside Park that did it. Um, I mean, that's not that's not enough of a reason, I don't think. They gave several reasons. One is yeah. that they had to shut off the noise by 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, something like that, and they wanted, to, of course, to go to midnight. In fact, they did something else. They were going to shorten the time from, I don't know what it was, by two hours so yeah. that they wouldn't go into that noise area. Well, that was a big problem because the people that were willing to pay the higher fee were those people who were going to need that extra time. So uh-huh. it was kind of an interesting dynamics. I mean, I, I'm not a try person, no. but I was very f- fascinated that somebody would spend eight years of their lives to bring it to New York. <laughs> And, and he seems to have taken it well. He says, well, there's the New York City triathlon. Sometimes you just got to get it done. You know, there was, there was a point like last winter 
um, where I, when we started to like really roll out all these events and we we're sort of trying to get all the permits and all the insurance, just figuring out how we were going to do these all these events, where I was like, you know, we could have just stopped the Brooklyn Marathon and it would have been fine. That in itself would not be a bad a bad side job. <laughs> yeah, 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 the New York City. But you also do stuff with Coney Island. Yeah. Um, oh, what's your take on, uh, you know, there's a controversy. I don't know if you heard, I mean, I'm sure you heard about it. The mm -hmm. boardwalk needs to be repaired. And, and the Parks Department, again, you know, they seem to get uh, in the middle of everything. They're, they're, they're a fun organization. <laughs> they, they want to replace it with some kind of synthetic materials rather than natural wood. Have, have, you, have, you, have you run on the boardwalk? Not recently. Have you, run a, have you ever run like the Brooklyn Marathon, uh, the Brooklyn Half Marathon down there? Not recently. The last time I'd done Brooklyn was like four or five years ago. About the same for me, probably. Maybe a little less than that. But, you know, I, I, you'd run that race with, hundred, with thousands of people running it, and you would invariably see people go flying on the boards. Or, you know, either because it was bound to happen because that's the nature of those boards or because they were in disrepair or whatever. I'm probably in the minority here, but I'm, I'm sort of okay with a surface that's a little safer and a little more conducive to running than boardwalks. Well, okay. Yeah. Well, the boardwalk's not meant for runners. You know, it's there a, you go. It's supposed to be enjoyed by everybody. But I think the argument is that natural wood is still the, uh, the preferred method by the local community. But then you've got to, you've got to maintain it. And we live in an age where, you know, we're not... Really, we don't really have the money to maintain the infrastructure, let alone build the inf build new infrastructure for the city. And this is unfortunate, of course. That's an interesting argument. It's, now, it's, it's a little off the uh, off from running, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> let's talk infrastructure. Yeah, let's talk infrastructure. <laughs> well, you know, you're you're in the business of putting on races and uh, and safety of the runners is a concern. Sure. And of course. Putting something on the boardwalk, you're probably going to have second thoughts. You probably want to wait till it's repaired because, as you said, there have been runners that, you know, their foot have gone to the ground. And, that, that I haven't seen, and, really. And, and, well, maybe not on the race, but yeah. in your insurance, you know, maybe rates might go up if, uh, if, you have to, if a runner has to collect. The event insurance um, business is interesting. Um, I don't know that we haven't actually. Fortunately, we've we've had very few issues. We had one young lady, unfortunately, have some heat issues after one of the Rosewood Island races. But other than that, we've been pretty lucky. And for the bigger races, we get you know partners like Brooklyn Hospital or St. Joseph's and Yonkers last week out there. Um, and I think we're gonna also start bringing paramedics out to some of the smaller races as well. Because oh, we cool. now okay. got a a four. We found a for-profit paramedic company where they basically send doctors and paramedics out to events. It's kind of neat. So if we don't have a hospital relationship, we want more than just an ambulance. These guys come out with a tent and all of that. Um, so I'm kind of into that. It's called Paramedco. Oh, excellent, excellent. Well, yeah. speaking of Yonkers, yes, you you guys took that over in terms of race management. Yes, sir. That's a big, big honor because uh, Yonkers is the second oldest marathon in the, in the United States after Boston. So how did that go? I thought we had a really good day. Um, a lot of work went into it, particularly, you know, boy, you didn't want to talk to me between like September 3rd and September 12th or so. I mean, those were rough, that, that was a rough time to know me. But, um, <laughs> but you know, it went really, really well. Um, there were small things that could have gone better, but, you know, we had over 900 finishers, I'm told, um, and some not finishers for the marathon, of course, that always happens. Um, and we had a great post-race party. We had an excellent start, an excellent finish. Um, and you also had a half at the same time. And we also had a half at the, f at the same time. Yeah. And, uh, and you brought somebody in to sing the national anthem. Carla, you know Carla. I don't know Carla, Carla but uh, she's a runner, I saw. She Car did the you, half. You should have Carla on the show. Carla's Car excellent. Oh, yeah. excellent. Can we talk about Carla for a second? Sure. It, and she can sing here if she likes. Carla Bruning is a member of the New York Harriers. She recently got married. So she's off the market, guys. Um, she... Um, She's a, she's a good runner. She's a, good, she's, a, she's a prominent writer. She's written about the Olympics, about running. She's done a lot of cool writing things. Um, and she's also, she, she also sings. She's in a band with other Harriers. Um, and it's an 80s band. Um, and I really want to get them to play at an event, actually, pretty soon. So, at uh, one of your events? Yes. Um, I wanted to have them play at an event last year. We couldn't quite do it. Now I'm starting to think about what our winter events look like and um, I'm not gonna I haven't spoken to Carla yet so I'm not gonna say yet but I've got I, I wish I could think the name of the band the band is just they play all these 80s songs okay. it's a bunch of Har New York Harriers I mean it's freaking awesome but um, I wanted to cover some of your future challenges and sounds like uh, bringing in the caller and her band in out of her event <laughs> what other th what other things are on your plate for this year we've got this zombie run in about 30 days or so, and I don't really know what that is yet, but people are really excited about it. Sounds cool, a zombie. Yeah. Where's it going to be? At, at Roosevelt Island, Oh, where, where we do all our things now. <laughs> oh, it's, 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 are people going to be in costume? Or uh, we're going to have, basically you can be a zombie or you can be a runner. 
if you're a runner, you, your job is to run to three different stations on the island, capture the flag from the stations, and avoid getting caught by the zombies. If you're a zombie, your job is to catch the humans and catch as many of them as you can and get, and get their personal flags. This is the first time you're doing this? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. This could be, uh, could be fun. I, my, the, the whole idea behind it was to do something that would actually be fun and a little less logistically daunting than, than, than Yonkers. Like oh, with, you know, with this, we can say, you know, go, go, take some ampl go take an amplifier and play some military sounds on that side of the island or some, some horror sounds. And, okay. you know, we're essentially creating a game board. Interesting. Yeah, so uh, that's I wonder if people there, uh, the resident might think it's a movie or something, you know, the zombies, the attack of the zombies and these runners. We are, we are going to reach out as much as possible to the... Um, to the community. We don't usually do that with the Rosalind races, so this time we're going to... Let them know. Let them know what's going on and try to get them involved, because this is meant to be a different scale event. This is meant to be family-friendly. It's meant to be... I think of like the video games, like Grand Theft Auto, where it's sort of like a universe, and you get to... There's a term for this, where you sort of do your own thing within the universe. And that's what we're sort of trying to create with a running component to it. Excellent. You need volunteers for the zombie thing? We'll need volunteers. I think I will volunteer for that in 30 days. We're going to have to get you made up then. <laughs> oh, cool. Are you going to have moulage? I, I, I see a zombie in your future. <laughs> a moulage. Cool. Any big plans for next year? Planning a marathon from um, that starts at Coney Island, goes through Brooklyn, up the west side of Manhattan, then wraps around through Harlem and ends in Central Park. Really? Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen, but, you know, we like to think big. <laughs> Sorry, Will. I would think if, you, yeah. if, that would have, if that took off, you know, that could have been part of the future New York City Iron Man because one of the things was the, uh, the marathon was such a, a difficult one. But listen, thank you so much for coming. Thanks for in. having me. Wish you all the success with New York City Run. Thanks, man.